So the question is with the GPZ600, pods or no pods? This is something that I want to talk about today and let's see if we can get to the bottom of the problem of why it's so difficult to fit pods on our bikes. Hi guys, welcome back to the GPZ600 channel. Um, I've had a, a few people asking me on the Facebook group what they need to do to their bike to get their pods to run. What we're talking about are these pod filters. The uh, airbox has been removed, pod filters are being put on, and um, the question is, is how to set up the carburetors to get these pods to run. Now, there is no definite answer for this, and why not? Well, um, you know, I uh, very often hear people who have put pod filters on their, on their GPZ600 um, and say, well, it was running fine before, but now it's running like a bag of spanners. What's going on? Well, I think we need to have a bit of a basic understanding of how these pod filters work, how your carburetor works, how the engine requires a specific mixture to run so that maybe we can understand why pod filters are such a problem. So if someone asks me, why is my bike not running once I put pod filters on? I always ask, well, did you do anything to the carbs to uh, adjust for the airflow? Uh, usually the answer is no, because, um, because people aren't aware of the fact that you need to do something else. You can't just put pods on and expect the bike to run. So why do people want to put pod filters on in the first place? Well, there are a number of reasons. Maybe aesthetics, if you're doing some sort of uh, a bike rebuild, custom job, bobber, cafe racer or something, then the airbox has to come off. But in the case of the GPZ600, I can pretty much place a bet that most people are having problems getting their bike to run because the, the boot rubbers between the airbox and the carbs have probably gone hard and, and shrunk and there's no real seal and they cost about a hundred bucks a set to replace. So on these bikes which aren't worth much at the moment anyway, rather than spending a lot of money on um, a fix that you're not sure if it's actually going to work, some people do go for the cheaper option and just decide to buy some pod filters, like a set of four, for about 30 or 40 bucks from Amazon or, or Wish or whatever, because it appears to be the cheaper solution. The thing is, is that an airbox is the a solution to a very complex airflow problem. Now the uh, Kawasaki and other manufacturers, engineers have sat down at the drawing board and have designed these airbox for absolute maximum and most efficient airflow into these carbs and the carbs are set up for the airbox. So if you mess about with the airflow, then the carbs are going to be out of spec and your bike just won't run properly. Okay, so that's something that you should be aware of to start with is if you put pod filters on, then you throw the, the specs out of, out of the book. So uh, after that, it's not really a surprise that it doesn't run. Add a aftermarket exhaust pipe on top of that, it just compounds the problem, makes things worse. Putting a, an aftermarket exhaust pipe on will affect the scavenging of the engine, so the, the, the time and the efficiency in which the, the exhaust gases are pulled away from the engine change. And effectively, by changing the speed of the airflow at the back of the engine, you change the airflow at the front of the engine too. So the big problem that we have with pod filters is we don't know the air flowability. How much air are you getting through these pods? But even if you knew how much it was, that information is no good to us because we don't know the air flow, is metered air flow. We don't know uh, how much air flow is coming through the original air box. We just don't have this information. So if you're putting pods on, don't ask the question how to set my carbs up because there is no definite answer, right? And I want to see if I can explain to you a little bit of what you can do 
if you really are determined to get pods working, I just wanted to give you a little step-by-step -step, uh, uh, information of what you can do, a little bit of information of how your carbs work. Maybe this helps someone to get their pods working on their, on their GPZ600, but if anyone does put pods on, be prepared for a lot of time intensive work rejetting, come to that in a minute, and uh, it's not a case of plug and play. It will not happen. Um, even with expensive pod filters like the K&N ones, just as an example, I mean, you can get some Wish round filters for about 40 bucks a set. Uh, the K&N ones will cost you 200 bucks. Uh, not only is it a premium product, but they have a different shape as well. You'll notice that the K&M ones are, are, are oval in shape. Yeah, uh, this is uh, because you can't generally put four round ones together on the GPZ 600. They just don't fit physically. They're too close. Um, I've got a few pictures here, which I will just pop up to show you what some people have done to, in, 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 in effort to try and try and get these pods to work. So the big issue is, it's the fuel mixture, okay? And uh, if you have a pod filter, which has a massive amount of air flowability, then your, your carbs are sucking in so much more air than what they're used to. So the mixture is going to be very lean, okay? It's gonna be very air heavy, not enough fuel. You need to balance this out by putting more fuel in. How do you do it? Well, let's talk about that now. All right, guys, just to show you um, on this picture pretty much what you've got on your on your GPZ car. On the left-hand side, I have a breakdown just to show you where the where the needles and jets and screws are with the picture in the middle showing you in position where they are. Just to show you, we have the pilot screw, which is up here, the yellow dot. Pilot screw, also known as the fuel screw or air screw, depending on its position on the car body. Just to explain, I have two quick pictures on the bottom right hand side here. Forward is going left, so the right hand side is indicating the airbox side or the filter side, and the left hand side is the engine side. If your fuel screw, uh, sorry, if your pilot screw is on the engine side, then it's a fuel screw, so screwing it out will give you more fuel. If your pilot screw is on the airbox side, it's an air screw. Screwing it out will give you more air. Right, totally irrelevant for us because on our GPZ 600, we have a fuel screw because it's on the fuel side. So the pilot screw or mixture screw, which is up here. Okay, the standard setting is uh, two turns out. That means you screw the screw all the way in. This is a little screw with a spring on it. You screw it all the way in till you feel it slightly seated and then you turn two turns out. That is the standard setup. Um, but as I say, that only adjusts the idle system, but I'll come back to that in a second. So we have our needle jet and needle jet holder or emulsion tube, which you see down here in this bottom picture. This is just it poking out. That's the needle jet. It's called the needle jet because the jet needle goes into the needle jet. The jet needle is tapered, so when it comes up, the hole increases, fuel comes through. Now the needle jet, the needle jet holder, the emulsion tube from underneath is situated here and the main jet is screwed into it. The main jet is the jet that actually depicts or dictates how much fuel comes up into the Venturi. Okay, now next to that we have in this turquoise color this is our pilot jet. This is the idle jet, if you like. Uh, just a point of interest here, a lot of bikes that run badly on idle after sitting for a long time, nine times out of 10, or 90 time, 99 times from 100, these things are blocked. 
it's always the same. Um, so, so these are the parts. Now, it's this bit up here on the top right, which is interesting. So, this is the throttle closed and fully open. Now, what system um, basically affects how your carbs work? So we start closed is zero, obviously it's off, nothing's happening here. Now the pilot system, the pilot system is anything to do with the pilot screw, so that's the mixture, the pilot jet, that's the idle jet, that, is, that has everything to do with everything from zero, this bottom line, up to a quarter throttle. After a quarter throttle, this plays no more significance. It's gone. So, so this is where I'm saying it's, it's no good just adjusting your mixture screw if at half throttle you're getting no power because the pilot system stops working after about a quarter. Okay. Now your throttle valve, the throttle valve is obviously the butterfly valve, um, that has an effect up to just over a quarter, but that's not something we're talking about here, we're talking about jetting. Now your needle jet, which is this red one here, okay, what you see poking out here, your needle jet affects everything from a quarter to just over half. So if you're having problems in the lower area, uh, above idling, you give it a little bit of get a bit of throttle, but you sort of start spluttering, and you may have a problem with the needle jet. You need more fuel. Now, what bikes with other carbs like Makuni carbs do is they raise the jet needle. They raise it. It's tapered, and by raising it, you allow more space around the pin around the needle for more fuel to come through now we can't do that on our bikes what you could do is under the needle jet is you could try putting a very small washer under there to raise it okay now once you start getting further up the line the jet needle itself is responsible for anything between a quarter and three quarters and your main jet, this is the big main jet, the blue one, right, is responsible for everything from fully open down to three quarters. So, is she idling rough? And look at your pilot system. Either your pilot screw, your mixture screw, needs to be turned out to give you more fuel, or your, your pilot jet itself is blocked up. Right, so you need to look in the pilot system. If at half throttle the bike is bogging down, right, then you need to look at your, your, your needle jet, your, at your needle itself. We have limited options here. So what we do is actually force more fuel through by increasing the main jet. The main jet is anything from full throttle down to three quarters, but because of lack of any um, adjustment option here, we can use that to force more fuel into the carbs. Alright, so that's how this works. Alright, this might actually explain a little bit more to you on what to adjust when you put your pot filters on. So pot filters are going to give you lots more air, so you need more fuel. But you need more fuel everywhere, so you're going to have to put bigger pilot jets in, you're going to have to put bigger main jets in, and you're going to have to play with the mixture screw. I hope you can appreciate that this isn't something you can do on a Sunday afternoon. So there you are guys, that was just a quick video on where some of the problems lie on our GPZ 600s. Um, the GPZ 600 is unfortunately particularly sensitive when it comes to airflow changes, as are a lot of bikes that happen to have Kaiheen carb. But whatever the reason may be, um, yeah, the fact of the matter remains, the GPZ 600 is just too sensitive to airflow change, which means 
just simply taking the airbox off and putting pod filters on won't work. So unless you get a garage to do your rejetting for you professionally, you will spend a lot of time and effort trying to rejet your carbs yourself and without a rolling road to check any of the actual power outputs, it's all a lot of guesswork, isn't it? So at the end of the day, it's your choice, I suppose, guys. If you wanna have a go at it, have a go. If someone's managed to do it and it's worked fine and you've had good results, let us know in the comments what you did. Um, there are a far more there are far more things to take into consideration than I've actually mentioned here. But basically, um, the point I'm just making is you can't just put pod filters on your bike and expect it to run. It won't. So, um, although it's a very complex um, subject, I hope I've managed to get a couple of points across um, to explain to you guys why. Well, you're gonna have problems putting these filters onto your bikes and it doesn't matter if they're cheap ones or expensive ones the problem remains the same it's the it's the unknown of the airflow you don't know what you have so you don't know what to jet and then you put another exhaust pipe on put a dyno jet kit on and everything just goes out the window so yeah it's quite complicated isn't it anyway I hope you liked this video if you did give me a thumbs up if you didn't give me a thumbs down but tell me why <laughs> all right guys thanks for watching I'll see you next time